In this practice example, I'm going to conduct a one-way between subjects ANOVA to test the hypothesis that different racial groups may be associated with different levels of self-reported mindfulness. So self-reported mindfulness, as I write in the textbook, is related to awareness of your environment, open to new experiences, and open to new perspectives. And so the participants rated themselves on those types of items, and they got an overall score on this mindfulness measure. And several racial groups were identified, such as non-Hispanic white, Black African American, Asian, Hispanic Latino, Native American, and other. And so we can test the null hypothesis of no difference between the means on mindfulness. And we can do that with a one-way between subjects ANOVA. I'm going to do it through the a general linear model this time because I'm going to want to look at effect size. So click on general linear model univariate and put mindfulness in the dependent box and racial group in the fixed factors because that's where the independent variables go. And click on options and click on descriptive statistics. You'll always want to check that out. Estimates of effect size. And I'm not going to click on observed power because that's a whole separate issue. It's certainly an important one. And homogeneity tests. Click on Continue, and click on OK. And what we find is that the samples were unequal in size, with the non-Hispanic whites at 280, African American 15, the Asian 13. So we have all the groups there with the sample sizes. Certainly important to consider if you're writing a report. And then we have the means here, just numerical differences in the means. Well, let's actually look at the ANOVA table first, and we can see that the racial group here is the one that you want to focus your attention upon. And it has an F value of 1.229 and the P value is 0.295. So what does that P value mean? It means I haven't rejected the null hypothesis. It suggests that there's an absence of evidence to suggest that there's a difference in the racial groups on mindfulness. So even though there are numerical differences in the mean, those numerical differences likely happen simply due to random fluctuations. And I note here the homogeneity of variance assumption was satisfied because it wasn't less than 0.05. So it implies that these standard deviations are all equal to each other within sampling fluctuations. Now we have the effect size here reported as partial eta squared by SPSS, but this is actually truly an eta squared, not partial eta squared. It's a, a mistake in the SPSS output to label this partial eta squared. It's just eta squared, and it's only 0.018. So it's really a small effect. So any effect that might have been identified would have been very small. None was actually identified, so the null hypothesis was not rejected. I think this is a good example because all too often we practice on data sets that are statistically significant. And in this case, it's not significant. And we don't really have much in the way of options except to simply state that we failed to reject the null hypothesis in this study, which is actually based on real data published in a study that I mentioned in the textbook.